Hey there, game developers. It's me, Titan Hex, and I am back with yet another tutorial. So we've been going pretty deep into these event commands. We're going to go just a bit deeper. This time we're going to handle uh, probably character and picture. And maybe if we get onto it, uh, screen and audio might come into play. But for the most part, we're just going to be handling these. And so just to save time, let's jump into it. The first part of a uh, character here is change transparency. And you can do this in the database. I, I showed that in our database tutorial. We can set up whether the initial character is transparent or not. But this is just for your player to determine whether or not the player is completely transparent. So it, it would be about the equivalent of set move round and transparent on with the player selected. But uh, it, it basically turns it on and off. Simple enough. Um, great for certain cutscenes or, or or when you need the player not to be present uh, there, there's different things and ways to, to do that but this is probably one of the best ways so then we have change player followers now that turns the caterpillar mode on where the player is being followed by the rest of the party it's it's pretty simple turn it off or on however you need gather followers is good for say you have an event that looks like a party member and you want it to walk around and then you want it to sort of disappear and then um you you you'd use gather followers and then make it walk into you and then you would have it following so um it's a very simple process basically so basically i would make the move uh set move out and i'd make the event that looks like the new party member walk into my character and then um but before I make him walk into me, I'm going to gather my followers so it doesn't look weird. Uh, you'll see if you play with it a little bit. Um, I might do a tutorial on, on you know, a little bit of cutscenes and stuff like that. And this will be a very useful one for that. So basically, it just makes all the Caterpillar characters following you just rush into your body. And uh, it, it's, it's a pretty simple little thing. So show animation is great for cutscenes and um, some custom battle systems. Basically, you play an event uh, or play a animation uh, that has been created through the animation menu in the database. Uh, pretty simple. You just play it on a player or a character, and you can choose whether it waits for completion or not. You know, the typical wait for completion is uh, the next section of the event won't go until uh, the animation is done playing so just keep that in mind show animation works pretty well for cutscenes and custom battle things uh, sometimes you can use them for special effects there's ways to do parallel process with show animation to make it um, like maybe bubbles flowing out of the water things like that um, little things like that can help but generally show animation can slow down the computer especially if there's like three or four of them uh, at least in the older ones it might have a better limit now and it might be better made now but either way you just want to avoid using too many show animations so you kind of avoid using it in anything but a cutscene so after that we have the show balloon icon and this is great for just adding some emote to your cutscenes and your dialogue maybe making it look like a character is surprised or things like that and you can add your own balloon icons you you have access to that in the resource manager but uh, generally this is great for just showing uh some of these balloons and you can create your own using these user defined ones uh, you'll find those in the list of animation or uh, list of balloon icons usually in the system folder uh, under graphics so these are just some of the ones that they let you use and if you wanted to you could change these to something else it's just good to remember that exclamation is something else but for the most part what they have is pretty good and it, it works really well so uh, it's good to have the balloon icons and just use them every now and then then you have erase event now erase event just takes all right by the way so one thing i forgot to mention is that character which we've gone over this before but character means events and other things on the map so these are typically used to be centered on a single character um a, a character on the map so anyways erase event 
removes the event uh, temporarily and then puts uh, when you leave the map and re-enter the map the event will return but it's good for making um, say monsters that um, don't disappear forever so monsters that when you leave the room and return will respawn which allows some grinding um, so you could do that with the erase event it, it works pretty well um, or maybe for certain cutscenes or things like that there, there are some things where erase event is definitely useful so next is the show picture pictures are pretty simple uh, basically, you will show a picture on the screen, and there's different modes of blending and thing like that, things like that that you can use for pictures. But um, it, it's pretty simple. I've used it to create menus, and it's really great for that. It's also good for uh, if you have certain scripts. Uh, parallax mapping scripts are very useful, or maybe special canopies where if you walk under them, it becomes transparent. This works really well for things like that. So show picture, um, you, you will usually, it'll, it's really good for GUIs too, custom evented GUIs. And it basically sticks to the screen um, and you choose where on the screen it sticks. I don't know why they haven't set up like an option that makes it uh, sticks to screen or stick to um, the map, but they don't. And you, you can, ha you have to use a plugin for that right now. But this is kind of uh, it. I don't have any pictures imported here, and you you will have to import them into the pictures, um, the pictures folder of the graphics folder. So you go into graphics folder, you go into the picture folder, you import a picture, and you put it here, uh, and you use it to stick to the screen, or if you have the plugin to the map, and you choose the origin. So this is basically, if it's in the upper left, uh, it'll start drawing it in the upper left to the bottom right. And if it's center, it just draws it from the center out. And this is kind of the X and Y coordinate of where it's going to appear. Now it's important to remember that this is in, um, I, I believe this is tile, but I could be wrong and we can get the tile coordinates down here where these two numbers are wherever we leave our mouse it's not working right now because I'm not on the map but wherever we put our mouse is where it's going to show us the XY coordinate which can really help us you know do these XY coordinate things so scale uh, we can choose we can stretch it out into different ways and we can change how opaque it is so maybe we can make a canopy that becomes uh, rather very uh, light and transparent. Um, so next is blend mode and the blend mode, they usually go into a little bit of it um, in the, what's it called? The F1 help menu, uh, but basically additive sort of, these are usually more fil uh, filter things. So you'll find them in things like, uh, what's it called? Photoshop and stuff like that. So multiply usually uh, it, it darkens it a little on top of it. Additive, um, it's a little bit more lightens it, I guess. Uh, but it does more than that. There, there, it definitely does a lot more than that. And then screen, I think uses the opposite color, so it does some sort of washing thing. Um, one one day we're we're gonna have to get more into that. I know I said I would with picture, but um, you know, hold on. I'm going to pause the menu. I'm going to pause the video real quick and then I'm going to find out exactly what it does and then I'll explain it to you because I've used them before in Photoshop. So one second. All right, guys, I am back. So did a quick read up. Uh, it's all very mathematical, believe it or not. Um, so additive takes the bottom, the colors of the bottom layer and then it looks at the pixel on the layer above it and it adds the pixel numbers together um, if you go into rgb modes of pictures and kind of check out some some of the heat it it's very it's very mathematical slash artistic it's this weird mix of math and art so additive takes the pixel number um of one and then adds it to the top of the other usually creating a lighter picture multiply of course multiplies the bottom and the top and uh, together, uh, and usually you get a very light 
uh, version of that. And I believe Screen does, oh, I just showed it. Screen is very mathematical too. So it's some sort of like, I believe it adds, multiplies, and then adds again, or, or is it subtracts, multiplies, and then subtracts again. It's very odd, but uh, you'll have to play with them a little bit They they you, and look at them. Um, but generally, this one creates darker, and these two usually create a little lighter, it, usually. And then, of course, normal is just the, it just overlays on top. So it's a pretty simple thing there. So just keep that in mind. Um, believe it or not, I believe either additive or multiply or even screen, one of these does really well for creating light. So if you wanted to create a lantern, uh, there is a one of these modes will work really well for uh, having a picture that, that's a lantern. Um, and we'll get into that sometime later. Uh, I'll show you how to do a like a lantern style puzzle uh, later on. But for now, just know that you can do it. So next is move picture, which just takes the picture number, which, by the way, when you do show picture, you choose the number that it's going to be in. And then if you remember what number it is, you can move it around. Um, so this works really well for just moving pictures. Um, you can do some cool stuff with it. Um, like, for example, I could create a common event that has my, uh, a picture that just slashes in. And um, there's actually some, th this is actually really cool if you do it correctly. Uh, I could make it maybe uh, a, a picture that's drawn over here and then it's like slides in and then another picture over here slides in, then the next one slides in and it's just, and then it slides out in special ways and it creates this cool little animation uh, all over the screen. I can do that uh, with this guy. And he, th there's some cool stuff uh, with this. Um, and I can just move a picture around as I see fit, uh, maybe move GUIs and stuff like that that I create with custom events. So move picture is really great for different things. Even mini games, I, I could create a fishing mini game, which I have done before um, using these. So next is the rotate picture. Um, I can take a picture and just rotate it around. Um, so I believe it goes, it's probably gonna go from top, uh, top down to the bottom, through the right side and then back up through the left side. So a typical clockwise formation uh, and the speed at which it rotates. So I, this is actually a new one. I don't know its use precisely, but uh, it, it does exist and it can be generally useful for, for that. So um, it's nothing super useful, but uh, I haven't seen it in action and I, I imagine I'll be testing it out a little later. But that's what I'm guessing it does. So it probably will stay right here and it'll probably change the rotation speed of the picture. So we'll see. Uh, tint picture is, of course, a way to just change the color of the picture using the hue methods. So I can change the RGB scale of it, sort of wash it, uh, or just change how saturated or desaturated it is. Uh, darken it, sunset, night, etc. They have a whole bunch of filters here that are pretty cool that will go over your picture. Um, so tint picture is basically just like tint screen. Uh, it does stuff like that. So next we have erase picture, which is how you remove a picture. So obviously show picture shows it, and if you want to get rid of a picture, um, you use erase picture. So pretty simple stuff right here. And that kind of sums up the character and picture and I think I'm gonna leave it there we're already hitting a good time on ours and I don't want to bring it up too much more on that time so thank you and I will see you guys in the next tutorial and as always like comment subscribe I have a patreon I always appreciate the support um, and thank you goodbye